G'day folks, Sam here. Today's practice is all about unlocking the hips, but my favorite part about this practice is it's all done from the floor. That's right, not once do we have to get up and off the mat. All done from the floor, no props required, so get super comfy and let this be your opportunity just to feel your way into every single piece of the hip joint. And you ready? Let's get started. begin today's practice sitting down on the floor just with the soles of feet together and letting the knees fall away from one another. You can use your fingertips for support just to lift your hips so that it feels as though the sitting bones are evenly grounded onto the floor. And then perhaps just take the hands, rest them at the front of the ankles and feel as though you're pulling the heels towards you as the chest started to rise. If you can, really pressing the balls of the feet together, allowing that connection to activate the muscles of the inner thighs a little bit more as you imagine the knees were drawing down towards the floor. Gently allowing shoulder blades to draw back towards each other. Chest to climb just a little bit higher. Let's take a couple more breaths here. And as you blink your eyes open, we're going to take both knees off towards the right hand side, setting up in this 90-90 shape. Both feet are flexed as best you can, 90 degree angles all over the place. Feet, ankles, knees, hips, it's all happening. And <laughs> with the hands, behind you, just using your fingertips or palms to support yourself. You're just gonna lift the knees and lift them up and over towards the left-hand side. Once the knees come down towards the floor, you may need to adjust the feet slightly so it feels a little more comfortable so that you're able just to start to move from one side to the next. Just feeling your way through the external rotation of the hips and the internal rotation of the hips as well. Now, I really love this particular exercise because you can almost pinpoint where in the hips feels okay or, or where there is a little bit more tension as you make your way through the process. For example, I know for myself, as I take my knees over towards the right, I can feel my left side hip flexors just uh, sending me a message saying, hey, Sam, I might need a little bit more support today. I'm not feeling too crash hot. So maybe just try to pick up what feedback your body is giving you as you start to move from side to side. You might be able to lift one hand up as you shift from side to side. Think about the opposite hand lifting to the direction that the knees are traveling, if that makes sense. Knees fall to left, right arm lifts. Knees fall to right, left arm lifts. If that feels okay, see what it would feel like to lift both hands off the mat for a moment. And then really just focus on letting the knees find the earth on either side, trying not to rush. There's a little bit of almost pelvic gyration slightly as you move from one side to the next. Might almost feel like an abdominal crunch as you start to shift. The glutes will also get a little bit of a massage there on the mat as well. Let's finish off whatever round you're on. Nice work. And then Take yourself to the center of your mat. Extend the legs out nice and long to start with. Feel the sit bones grounded evenly on the floor. And the left leg is going to stay where it is. I'm going to cross the right ankle on to the left thigh. In the moment, we work to fold forwards. But to get a little more out of this right hip, you could imagine that your left forearm was moving around the outside of the right foot. And your right forearm was pressing gently onto the inside of the right knee. The left side is lifting up as the right side moves down. And you see if you could find a little bit of fold in that position. And then once you understand the action that the hands uh, were contributing to, you can release them. Perhaps just walk your arms out forwards and find a little more depth in that fold.
Take another breath here. Nice work. We'll see if we have just a little more space here. Imagine your right ear was going to move over towards the sole of your right foot, almost like your right foot was a phone and you were trying to pick up the phone call here. So this little bit of spinal rotation is just going to target the, out, target the outer right hip just that little bit more and perhaps getting a little more feedback. Maybe your right hand could reach down and catch the outside of your left foot as you gently draw the left toes back towards you. Take a breath. As we gently bring our torso back through center, we're going to work to lift up this right leg. Now, option one, you could use your left hand around the right foot, your right hand around the right knee, and lift as though the shin was trying to draw in towards the chest. It might look like this. If you had a little more space, you could use the inner eyes of your elbows to catch hold of those same points adjusting so sit bones feel grounded trying to draw the calf almost the inner part of that right calf towards the sternum maybe pressing your left heel out in front of you and if you're with me i'm going to try and very slowly with control resist gravity for a moment and just slowly start to make your way down onto the floor keep pushing the foot into the arms and the arms into the foot as you make your way down Get as low as you can go with the left heel still grounded on the mat. In fact, press that left heel forwards. Imagine you were just inching your way a little closer down onto your back. You might gently gaze over your right shoulder here and imagine that that right knee was going to land down onto the mat all the while still pressing that left heel forwards. Take an inhale. Nice work. Square your chest back towards center. Take your middle and index finger of the right hand, wrap them around your right big toe. As you lower your back and your head down onto the mat, extend the right leg up towards the ceiling. As far as it will go, you may realize the toe is not there for you to catch. If that's the case, you could catch the back of your calf, the back of your hamstring, or you could just do this with a bent right knee. doesn't matter at all. Extend the left arm out to the left-hand side of the room. Breathe in. And you exhale, see what it would feel like for you to extend and open your right leg out to the right-hand side of the room. As best you can, keeping left sit bone still grounded onto the mat. Both shoulder blades grounded onto the mat. Left heel pressing forwards to the front of the room. Take a breath. Gently bring right leg back through center. See if you could bend your right elbow, lift your head up and off the mat. Any amount will do. Still pressing that left heel forwards. Maybe you take both hands towards the back of the right leg, whatever is available for you to hold on to, just to get that leg a little closer towards the face. Take a breath. As you release your right leg, we're going to cross right knee all the way over the left. So there's no more gap between the thighs. To come in towards a twist, shuffle hips towards right edge of mat. Allow knees to fall off to the left hand side of the room. As you spread your arms wide, working to keep both of those shoulder blades grounded onto the mat. Really using your exhales here. So the exhales, we're allowing that spine just to soften a little more. Trying to lose as best we can the resistance. Trying to allow yourself just to be in the shape. Take a breath. And gently unravel the legs. Come back through center. And then cross the ankles, wrap the hands around the knees, we'll roll up 
toward the seat. We'll get to do all that again on the opposite side. So we extend the legs out nice and long. Right leg stays where it is this time. Left ankle crosses on the right thigh. So you do your best to try and adjust your sit bones so that you feel nice and even. And remember the, the aim of using the hands here. So the right forearm perhaps will go around the outside of the left foot. That's trying to pull the foot up gently. And the left forearm just gently on the inside of the left knee gently trying to move the left knee down. We're not trying to jam it down towards the floor. It's just a gentle shift. And again, once you understand what the arms are trying to achieve there, you could do that without the use of them and just let your arms walk forwards. Using the breath to feel just a little more depth and a little more space there in the hip. So we come back up towards the seat. Let me see if we can find that gentle rotation, imagining that your left ear was going to move down towards the sole of your left foot. Subtle spinal rotation does absolutely intensify the feel of this stretch. As you bring yourself back through center. Opportunity here to pick up the left leg. Remember the two options we had before. You could use the hands around the foot or the knee. If that feels okay for you. Then trying to draw the shin in towards the chest a little bit. Try to keep the left foot flexing as best you can. If there is a little more space, work the eyes of the elbows. Now that is absolutely going to make this ooh, a lot more challenging. So you take the option that works for you. Calf drawing in towards the chest, right heel pressing forwards towards the front of the room. Chest lifting high, as high as it will go right now. When you feel ready, when you've got a strong grip around the leg, you try to lower spine down onto the mat, still keeping the right heel as close to the ground as it possibly can be. Stamping heel forwards to the front of room. Imagine you were just leaning back like there was a very soft, comfortable pillow behind the head. And eventually the head was going to get down there. And again, maybe that's not right now. That's okay. Perhaps looking over the left shoulder, seeing if left knee could get even just an inch closer towards the floor. And coming back through center, middle and index finger of the left hand wrap around the left big toe as you lower down on to your back. Remember this could be done with a bent knee. This could be done with the hand around the back of the calf, the hamstring. Whatever works for you. In this space, you start to slowly open the left leg out to left hand side. Again, let your priority be lengthening the right leg and keeping the right sit bone still grounded onto the mat. So you don't need to completely just flop onto the floor. We're working to find a stability here and an even length through both of the legs. As you push that right heel forwards, we're actually working to lengthen the front of the right hip as well. So that's an active part of the shape here as well. very mindfully. Bringing that left leg back through center, working to lift the head off the mat any amount. Imagine knee was getting a little closer towards the left leg there. Still pressing right heel forwards. 
Again, like we did on the previous side, maybe you interlace the fingers and take them towards the back of the left leg, wherever there's space, whatever's available. Last breath. And we mindfully release. I don't know how, but I keep shuffling towards the back of the mat. So if you do that as well, just shuffle forward so you've got lots of space behind you. This time left thigh crosses all the way over the right. You shuffle hips towards the left edge of the mat as you allow the knees to fall towards the right-hand side of the room. Adjusting, I call it shimmying. So shimmying so that you can feel both of the shoulder blades still stay grounded onto the mat. Remember how important those exhales are, especially when we're twisting. They're there to help you release and to soften. Gently bringing yourself back through center. And take a moment just to let your, your spine flatten out against the earth. To let your hips ground gently onto the mat. Just to recalibrate with the spine. Nice and even, straight line from crown of head down to tailbone. And as we press into the feet, we start to lift the hips off the mat. Shoulder blades roll back and down. Perhaps you interlace the hands behind the back. Take one last breath. As you gently allow yourself to lower down, we'll shuffle the feet as wide as the mat so that the knees can just naturally knock together. You don't want it to feel as though there's a lot of effort required for the knees to fall together. You just want them to fall together naturally. So. If that means your feet are a little wider or a little more narrow, that's completely fine. Take the arms up and overhead. Just gently interlace the fingers. And then from here, allow both of your knees to fall towards the left-hand side of the room. So similar to the beginning of practice, we have an internal rotation in one hip and external rotation in the other. If you have the space, perhaps your left ankle could rest into the outside of your right thigh there. Using the weight of the left leg to find a little more length for the front and the outside of the right hip. If you can keep a little bit of activity in the right glutes as well, it'll just help to support the front of the right hip a little bit more. Final breath. And gently. Release the left foot for a moment. Take your time to let the hips come back through center. Again, feet are wide, knees together, and then knees will fall off to the right-hand side of the room. Taking arms overhead just allows a little more length through the torso as well. Perhaps right ankle rests on the left thigh. I don't know why, whenever I reach my arms over my head in this position, the yawn always sneaks out. So. <laughs> I tried my best to cover it. There was actually one on either side, but you may have you may have caught me out. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Sometimes those yawns just want to come out, though. No point trying to stop them. Last breath. Release the right foot gently. Let the hips come back through center. 
Now, we have two options here to seal practice. If you would like, you could bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees fall out wide. This supta baddha shape, allowing arms to rest down by the side. Now, if your hips feel comfortable in that position, I encourage you just to stay there for a few moments. But if it feels a little tight through the inner thighs and the groin, just extend the legs out long and come towards Shavasana. And let this be your opportunity just to do nothing for a few moments. Let's relish in the fact that not once do we have to lift our bottom up and off the mat. Let's rejoice the fact that not once do we have to get up onto hands and feet, up in a downward facing dog. We spend all of our time down on the floor. A little bit more of a restorative way, but still strong. Restorative but strong way to open and feel some rotation and some movement through the hips. So be grateful you were on this journey. Be happy you had the time to feel your way into your hips. Embrace the opportunity and the space you have to be still. From me to you with thanks. Peace.